Welcome to the Goat Shed. It's Monday, the 14th of November 2021. It's 18 degrees Celsius outside, which is around about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. It's quite a windy day. Today we're going to talk about what tools you need to fix your pinball machine. Now, we'll talk about tools that you need just for very basic maintenance, and we'll go through the tools that we'd recommend once you get a bit more serious into your repairs. There's obviously things here that we won't be covering, but maybe common sense prevails and says you need them. But as I said, we just want to go over the basic tools. Now, this has probably been done before, I'm not sure, but we have been asked a few times, oh, what tools do you recommend, etc., etc.? And what do you use them for? What do they do? So, yeah, why not? So here we go. We're going to show you pretty much what we use in the goat shed each day and then things that we would recommend if you're going to get more and more advanced repairs that are really handy to have. So let's have a look at what we need and take it from... All right. Screwdrivers. You need good screwdrivers. So you need flat blade and Phillips. Now remember, we're only talking about electromechanical machines here. So a good number five, a number six, and a number eight are probably the three main drivers you'll need. Um, maybe a number five insulated driver if you're a little bit wary of working with other stuff. Phillips screws are normally only used on Williams and Bally games, so you need a couple of different types of Phillips screwdrivers. Okay, we'd recommend a, a pair of um, needle nose pliers and a pair of wire cutters. And uh, if you have, if you need, uh, also I recommend maybe duckbill pliers. I think we've got some here. Oh, there's one larger pair of duckbills just there. So they're basic things. Now, Another really useful, other really useful tools, I should say, is a good set of nut drivers. Now, there's a set of Husky drivers that I bought in the USA when I was there last. Highly um, recommend you get some nut drivers. So you have a 3 16th. They're used largely for the nuts on the um, switch stacks that are on the Gottlieb's core rails and other associated parts. Quarter inch, very handy. Now, they're all colour-coded too, so um, then we have a 5 16th. Now, you're fixing stepper units, you have to have a 5 16th nut driver. 11 32nd nut driver is the green one. The blue one is probably the least used, the 3 8th. But the 7 16th, this one here, undoes the big nuts on valley step units. And I think I've rarely used a half-inch one. But they come in the set. You can buy them individually, of course, but it is much cheaper. To buy them in a set. Now I also recently bought a set of Klein um, hollow through nut drivers and they're magnetic so we're going to find them rather useful. Now the other things you need are Allen keys. They come in very handy. So your two common ones are the 1 8th and the um, 9 64th. That's the 9 64th here. They're very common um, but I'd recommend you buy a set of Imperial Allen keys. We recently purchased a set of Imperial T-handle Allen keys. Now, these are really handy and um, it gives you good purchase on them. I only recommend if you're working on a lot of machines that you buy those. Other useful tools would be a, a light hammer. Now, spring hooks, especially if you're going to be replacing drop target you need the spring hook now I've got these two here here and here are from my typewriter days and I were homemade by myself um, they need a little bit of maintenance at the moment but they're very handy this one here on this side uh, you can purchase <clears throat> now I think they're available at a lot of places now where they weren't previously but they're handy now another handy thing is a spring screwdriver that's made out of spring steel. Once again, that's homemade. I've had that for probably 50 years now. And they're very handy. As you can see, it stays in there and you start the screw with it. You don't use it to screw the whole screw in. You just start the screw with it. So pretty good when you've got that play field up in the air. Makes life a lot easier. 
a multimeter and a soldering iron. Now we we have a solder station here, but you know you can get the one you can just carry around with you. You can get the butane ones. There's different schools of thought on that. Use what you want to, and some oil. Now we use light machine oil, such as sewing machine oil, or it's actually called Caltex AR oil. I think it was from memory. I've got a large drum of that. It's very light, but of course there is. Everyone talks about three in one. I've never used three in one, but I take it it's a fairly light oil. Remember, the only part, places you lubricate pinball machines with oil and the only places are in stepper units where metal is going to metal. You never, ever, ever put them on flippers or anything, flipper coils, coil sleeves or anything like that. And you need a good light. Uh, there's one we use there. It's just an Arlec portable lamp. That's pretty good. Now, just getting back to the moulding meter, we use a moulding meter with the alligator clips on the end there. That you can unscrew those, and that underneath there, that's a magnetic tray. I'd, I'd get one of them. See, everything just sticks onto it. That moulding meter we've got's a Cabac. That's a T eight two two nine. That was quite an expensive meter. That's around about a hundred and eighty dollar meter in Australia. But look, you can buy a $20 meter. You're just going to measure uh, resistance and you want to check if a coil's open or not. Maybe you want to check lamps, etc. So they're good to have. Now, supplementary tools, if you get more advanced, you may want a things like a Dremel. They're quite handy. That's a Dremel 2001. We've had that a couple of years now. Um, it's just about worn out, that one. So we're going to buy replace that with a cordless Dremel. Everyone recommends that. Um, a fuse trip, you can buy these fuse trips here. So they just have the two lugs on them, and we solder a blown fuse onto the bottom of it. You know, there's other ways you can connect them, but that works for us. So saves blowing fuses. Um, you can get 10-amp rated ones, 15-amp, 5-amp, you can get most ratings that we'd commonly use, so we use that. Um, there's a, a, um, a, a testing uh, lamp drive, screwdriver, so, well, not screwdriver, but lamp uh, tester, circuit tester, I should say. That's a Klein, you can see there it's 6 to 24 volts, so don't use it on old Williams or Bally's with 50 volts, it'll blow the lamp in it. I found that out. Um, you need test leads, those, you can buy them in multiple packets with the alligator clips on. And we like to use a, a lead with a, a probe on one end and a test lead on the other. And that's very long, it'll reach from the fuse block on the machine and go right round to the back box. What parts do you need? Well, if you can, get yourself some assorted screws, you can collect them over the years. Obviously, have rubbers with a rubber kit handy. Um, if you can, buy some old relays, if you see any on eBay or something like that, and some lamps, and, and probably some coil sleeves as well. Coil sleeves are, are fairly common in someone's toolkit. Now, apart from that, you, you don't need many other tools. As I said on, in, in the commencement of the video, there are tools that people do use. Um, so we have a drill press here. So that's a, a very expensive drill press with the with the vice on it. We have a vice, of course. Yes, we do have a can of WD-40. We have to use that for unfreezing nuts sometimes. And the most common tool we use just about every day in pinball repair is the old bench grinder, mainly the the polishing wheel. And we have lots of cans of paint up there for touch-ups and things like that. But if you're just doing basic repairs, you don't need any of that. So that's what we use here in the goat shed. Um, we have a lot of spare parts, so um, we're pretty lucky. Um, there's the um, ASFS relay box. We've got lots of those in there and various other things. We've got lots of relays. There's the Gottlieb drawer. And we've got other, other stepper units. Anyone that has follows our videos, we've shown all this before. There's more parts that we have there. So, yes. So, thanks very much for watching. And if you have any questions about tools or whatever, 
please ask us in the comment section. So this has been another Goat Shed presentation.